So this morning I was watching a video from some of my contemporaries talking about masculine and feminine energy. And I oftentimes have to laugh at some of these conversations. First off, many of it is just this rhetoric that's generalizations, that men are turning into women and women are turning into men. And I thought I'd dive into this conversation for a few minutes to share my perspective. Now, to give you some examples of how women are turning into men like the boss bitch out there or, or women that are more goal-oriented or career-oriented or whatnot, I'm asking, and that's becoming more like men, I want to ask everyone, what is so wrong with that? What is so wrong with a woman being empowered in her life to actually support herself? Because the reality is, is we've been in for, for hundreds of thousands of years, women have been dependent on men for survival. And if you, if you experience what I experienced about 15, 20 years ago, I know a lot of men, a lot of couples in the age of 40 began having divorces with their partners. And a lot of women found themselves on the short end of the stick from a financial perspective. And I simply mean to say is that there isn't enough income, there isn't enough resources oftentimes to go around when, to, when a couple goes through a divorce and they had to put themselves out in the workplace to support themselves. So I'm here to simply say is women being dependent on men, you're really having to trust that this man has A, the capacity to financially support a couple for 20, 30, 40, even 50 years, having that, not expectation, but that's certainly that dynamic that's been around for hundreds of thousands of years. And I'm simply here to say, there's no guarantee in life. So a woman being self-supportive is actually a good thing, a woman being empowered. So why does that have to be characterized as masculine energy? How about that just being empowered? Okay, so now let's talk about the narrative that men are turning into women, that they're becoming more in touch with their emotional side. As if there's something wrong with being more in touch with their emotional side. And what I mean to say is, given that men oftentimes don't live as long as women, a part of that is because they hold on to their emotional stress and they die much younger because they stuff their emotions in. So I'm here to say there's a benefit for a man being able to tap into his emotional side to be able to emote, to be able to um, release stored up energy. And I don't see anything wrong with that. Okay, now let's go back to some of these narratives about women being, you know, in their masculine energy. Well, it's interesting that a lot of coaches will characterize the women in their masculine energy as being controlive, controlling, as being criticizing, act in a state of contempt, to be defensive. Well, so I have a real problem. Is controlling behavior masculine? Is being defensive masculine? Is being critical of another person? Is being in contempt masculine? Because I'm assuming that if a man was controlling, a man treated a woman with contempt, a man was criticizing, a man was stonewalling, a man was being defensive, all of these uh, behaviors that are unattractive, if a man was being that, he's being in his masculine. You see, and the same thing when a man is, you know, being in a state of generosity, like receiving a woman making effort as if there's something wrong with that. See, a lot of times the, the narrative that men are turning into women is that they're becoming overly passive, that that's feminine energy. Well, passivity isn't a really healthy energy, whether you're a man or a woman. Being controlling isn't a healthy energy, whether you're a man or a woman. So, okay, so now we have to talk about how this relates into the bedroom. Everybody talks about polarity, and it's important to have the masculine polarity and the feminine polarity. See, my, my belief system is this. If two horny people have sex, what does it matter who's on top and who's on bottom? What's it matter who initiates? Two horny people like to have sex. So, so, so you have to be, in my opinion, horny enough to want to have sex because here's the, the, the challenge with this conversation about polarity. It's usually that a woman is in a passive state and the man has to initiate sex because he's the masculine, she's the feminine. But well, what if she is not, let's just say, in the mood? What if she's feeling sick? What if she's um, maybe angry at him? 
for him to be in his masculine, to take charge and take her in the bedroom and claim her. Well, you know, that's disregarding another person's feelings. So I think when it comes to the sex conversation is to determine, yes, it's important that there's someone initiates, but you also have to have a receptive person to initiate sex. And it's certainly important to have a healthy sex life within a relationship. I'm a big proponent of that. But do we have to make it that's so dramatic that it has to be, you know, the man initiates and the woman just receives? Well, if she's not in a space to receive, you know, he can initiate all he wants. It's still not going to create the dynamic that this narrative talks about. Now, a man certainly has to create a safe space. A woman has to certainly create a safe space. Certainly two people have to want to engage in a physical relationship, but to create all these narratives. And by the way, men want women who initiate sex. Does that make him a feminine? You know, we like it when you ladies initiate sex because if it's always on us, you know, we're dependent upon you always being in a good mood for it. That's why I prefer two horny people having sex because then you don't have to, uh, what's the um, what's the expression? Who wears the pants in the family? Who cares when you're in the bedroom? You don't want to be wearing pants in the bedroom. You hopefully want to be naked. All right, with that said, are men becoming more like women? Certainly, there's a shift in... Um, going on right now where men are actually being afforded the opportunity to be more emotionally expressive. I think that's a good thing for men. And I think it's a good thing for women. I also think it's really good that women are in a space of empowerment. So they're no longer dependent upon men for their survival. And I think that's a good thing too. So now, I shared something earlier about the negative aspects of a woman being in control and contempt and how that's characterized as masculine. See, I'm really here to say from my perspective, that's really bad behavior, bad behavior. It's not masculine. And when a man is being momentarily passive, I don't consider that a woman being passive is necessarily a good thing either. So let's talk, let's throw out the gender terminology because we, we all say that energy is not gender based, but the reality is, is we are making some sort of assumptions that these are gender based. So let's throw this out the window and let's call it what it is. Bad behavior, whether it's a man or woman doing it is not healthy. Needy behavior, whether it's a man or woman, is not healthy. What's truly healthy is um, emotionally mature people enter in, entering into a relationship with one another. And certainly there's a benefit of having roles in the relationship. And what I mean to say, not gender-based roles, but for example, my sweetheart, there's a picture of her right there. She's actually planning our next trip. Why? because she's good at planning trips. It's not that she's in her masculine. It's not that I'm in the, my feminine, that she's planning the trip. She just happens to be better at that. So what I'd prefer couples to really recognize is leverage your strengths. You know, some people have like in the case with Marie, she has the strength of planning a trip. She's good at it. She's planned a gazillion of them that she knows how to find the deals. Okay. That's not her being in her masculine energy and me being in my feminine energy. It's leveraging her strength. I happen to be the one that kind of um, leads our spiritual relationship by planning spiritual events for us. So for our relationship, so we can strengthen our relationship. That's not me being in my masculine. That's not me being in my feminine. It's just merely we leverage each other's strengths and we capitalize on that. See, the minute we make this gender-based gender roles, stereotypes, that sort of thing, it creates a ton of confusion for human beings. And I'm here to, to suggest an alternate way of doing things by throwing out the gender rhetoric and actually leaning into a heart-centered way of approaching relationship. I highly recommend reading the book, reading the book, If the Buddha Dated, If the Buddha Dated, this is a great book that throws out the gender, gender rhetoric and says, how do we connect with one another at a heart-centered level? Maybe if we started to focus more on both the physical aspects of a relationship, the tactile things, paying for bills and the doing in relationship, and also focused on the being in relationship for both men and women alike and stop creating a narrative that men are bad, that women are bad, 
because it's the creating this narrative of men are bad and women are bad or they're weak and they're too strong creates so much animosity, frustration, anger that couples aren't going to connect with one another. And I'm here to encourage a more conscious way of approaching a relationship than this childlike way with a lot of this rhetoric out there. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating? If it is, please let me know. Please post a comment below. I'd like to hear your thoughts. And hi, Linda. As always, if you find value in the group, please tell your friends about Midlife Love Mastery. Send them to my website, jonathanasley.com. Have them click the group coaching button so they can join our fantastic group. And I'm going to sign off this video as I always do. First off, give myself a big, gigantic Jonathan Bear hug of self-love. I'm going to reach into the camera and give you a hug of love if that's okay. I'm going to ask you to turn to someone, pet a teddy bear a pillow, give it or them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love. And let's face it, we could all use more love in our lives. Thanks a bunch. Bye-bye now. Bye.